Hey, a friend, Chris here from Wide Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you quickly how to deal with a recording delay. So if you're trying to record audio or mini into your Logic Pro project, but you're experiencing delay, whether the actual recording seems to be moving around on you, even though you sound in time, or you're trying to play along and your signal is delayed in your headphones or in your speakers. So starting right off, then first stop always when you're trying to monitor and record through Logic Pro Software Mixer. So you can see that I have software monitoring turned on and I'm planning on recording a guitar performance through this channel strip. I have my input set, I have my plugins loaded. So the first stop we always have to do is the IO buffer size, which can be found either in the LCD here, if you've customized your LCD, or by going to Logic Pro at the top, down to settings and audio. So right here, you can see the IO buffer size and there's various values. Typically when you're trying to record, you set the buffer size as small as possible to reduce the amount of latency where you're not experiencing pops, clicks, system overloads. And when you're just listening, playing back or mixing, you choose the largest size, typically 1024. Once you've chosen your buffer size, the next place to look if you're experiencing any sort of delay in the recording is to look at this slider called recording delay under the audio preferences again, or audio settings. This slider should be set to zero samples. Not once in the 10 plus years I've been using Logic Pro, I've ever had to set this to anything other than zero samples. I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I just don't know of one. But sometimes this can get jostled. So for example, if I move this slider to the left, when I record, even though it will sound like I'm in time with the drums in this project, the recording that will be placed in the tracks area will actually be ahead of the drums and the metronome. And if I slide this all the way to the right, my performance, my recording will be late and anywhere in between. Again, you want this set to zero samples. To quickly demonstrate, I'll move this window out of the way and I'll pick up my guitar and I'm just gonna play a quick palm muted part so that you can hear my performance in real time and then you can hear the resulting recording. Here we go. I just wanted to be super clear, super staccato, so we know where those hits are occurring. But check it out. If we now listen to this recording, now I'm not an amazing guitarist, but that seems a little late, right? And if we zoom in, you can see that's where the first hit occurs, but the recording has been placed here. So let's set this slider back to zero. And let's record once more just to do it. Okay, that's good enough. Let's take a listen. All right, considerably better. Now, number three in our list is you want to make sure you don't have any latency inducing plugins in the signal path. What I mean by this is if we load an instance, let's say of the adaptive limiter, if I hover my mouse over the adaptive limiter, we get this help tag that pops up. If you have help tags enabled, we can see the adaptive limiter introduces 9,600 samples or 0.2 seconds of latency. So this is gonna be a problem if I try to record. Let's try it again. Right, the latency is so significant, I'm having a hard time performing with the project. So this is a problem. Now, it's also worth pointing out that the adaptive limiter doesn't have to be on the channel strip itself. It could also be on the stereo output. So again, if I hover my mouse, we get 9,600 samples of latency or delay. If I try to record again, same result. So here's what I'm gonna recommend. First, if you don't need a latency inducing plugin, which in my opinion, in any recording situation, you probably don't, I would just get rid of this plugin. Just get rid of anything that introduces a latency. And again, if you hover your mouse, you're gonna see a latency value if there is latency. So in this case, there's no latency being introduced by any of these plugins. Perfect. However, if you're in a project that's pretty well along, and you have things in place and you know you don't want to start taking apart your project you just need to get one last take in there just to finish off 
In that case, we're going to use low latency mode, which can be found up here in the control bar. It looks like a speedometer, or it can be found under Logic Pro, Settings, under Audio, under the General tab here. If you check out last week's video, which are the 11 things I think you should customize to improve your workflow in Logic Pro for 2025, I'll show you how to get this set up in the control bar so you don't have to dive into these settings. But now, with low latency mode on, let me try hitting record. Perfect. Sounds great. I didn't have to remove the adaptive limiter. Logic Pro actually just completely bypasses it. So if I had boosted the signal at all with this plugin or applied any processing, it would just ignore it. So we can record without latency. Now, if you turn on low latency mode and you find that you are experiencing latency, even with low latency mode on, likely you just need to go right back to that setting, turn it off and turn it back on. Just kind of jiggle the handle. This happens to me all the time. Just jiggle the handle and it should be ready to go. So I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you for more later this week. Talk to you later. Take care.